Hello and another welcome to the Pitch Side Podcast. I'm your host, the HOD of the BSP. Like, share, comment on the YouTube version of this podcast, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, enable notifications to receive all the updates from these episodes, which you can listen to on Spotify, Google Podcast, or any other platform, and the other content on the channel. Follow us on social media, MSR BSP on Twitter, Pitch Side Pod on Instagram. And of course, join us for more. You are welcome. Welcome to episode 114, where we're going to be reviewing the weekend finally after the end of the international break it's friday so it's the return of the weekend review and finally the international break is brought to an end really it was i mean it wasn't boring i definitely enjoyed covering it but certainly it doesn't compare the joy of covering the leagues and the champions league and we're returning to that of course uh, over the course of the weekend and definitely I um, I mean, I have to start with, I think, it's the biggest, really, game of the week and the biggest, I think, point, talking point of the weekend, if you want to say. And it will be from the Bundesliga, and it will be about, of course, RB Leipzig versus Bayern Munich, but certainly the Bundesliga doesn't have only um, that game in store uh, this weekend. It has certainly some interesting fixtures as well um, elsewhere to look forward to. Uh, on this uh, in, in this weekend, of course, aside from this title showdown between RB Leipzig and Bayern Munich. And we're going to be kicking things off talking about the Bundesliga, which, of course, uh, kicks off on Saturday uh, round, um, you know, it's round um, of matches. is going to kick off on Saturday uh, for round 27, and it will kick off with Borussia Dortmund versus Eintracht Frankfurt. This is an important match as well for Borussia Dortmund, of course, and for their top four aspiration. They want to become, uh, you know, they want to return into form um, as far as they're concerned against the side Eintracht Frankfurt, who's having a great season in my opinion uh the fact is that you know the, the form i mean although the form as of late is not exactly great for both uh since bruce since Eintracht frankfurt won that game against Bayern munich they only won once in the next five or so so that is really um you know not exactly the per- most perfect of form as far as Dortmund are concerned i mean yes they've been winning games but definitely the weird results that they could have sometimes could really affect them as far as the top four chances are concerned for um for Eintracht Frankfurt, you know, um only one win in the in the last um or only two wins in the last night again since that win against Bayern. They won on the one of the next four. Um, you know, they conceded goals in in, in each and they really I mean it, I mean, those games, I mean, against Stuttgart and Leipzig, you not really blame Eintracht Frankfurt for drawing against them because, realistically speaking, they are two tough games. And even winning a 5-2 the last time out against Union Berlin, you know, was good, but, you know, definitely you needed more points for the other games. Anyway, for Borussia Dortmund, they, you know, they are in a different situation, really, when you look at it. Um, you know, in, in the Bundesliga, their form has been decent over the last five games or so, but, you know, dropping points doesn't help because they are on the back of such a bad season, such a tough season overall, that you really think, you know, they didn't need to drop points in those kind of situations, they shouldn't be dropping points in those kind of situations, and, you know, the last draw against Scotland, I think, pretty much confirmed the fact that Dortmund sometimes drop points when they don't need to, I mean, they drop points against Scotland home and away, by the way, so it's not exactly surprising. Um, as far as head to head is concerned, I mean, it's pretty poised, I would say, um, towards Dortmund. They won, um, they won three, um, they won three of the last six. Um, you know, the last, the other matches ending in a draw. You really have to look, you know, very, I think you have to look very far away, I would say, back 2016, if you want to look for a Eintracht Frankfurt victory over Borussia Dortmund. I mean, they, you know, and then of course, Dortmund, you know, won, um, you know, won six of the last eight, or won four of the last seven, really, and uh, next to that. It will be an interesting one. Again, the top four is on the line in this one. And definitely it will be an interesting one to watch. Another team that is somewhat interested in the top four spot at the moment is Bayer Leverkusen. Maybe they will try and catch up late on, but I don't think they will be able to do that. Um, you know, Bayer Leverkusen facing Schalke. I think this is a definite three points. Like, who doesn't want to win against Schalke? Who cannot win against Schalke? I bet the... I bet the B team of Schalke would have won against that team of Schalke, the A team, uh, definitely. Uh, Augsburg versus Hoffenheim as well on Saturday. Uh, Mainz versus Arminia Bielefeld in a relegation battle showdown. 
Wolfsburg facing Köln, and of course we have RB Leipzig versus Bayern Munich. And this game, I think, revolves all around the. I think I, I, it has more to do with the injury of Lewandowski, although it revolves around it for the uh, biggest talking point. I think of it uh, how the Lewandowski injury is going to affect that, and definitely, if we learned anything from the international break, is that Germany cannot play with a false nine, which means that Bayern cannot play with a false nine because they don't have a replacement for Lewandowski. And I know the option might put itself out there to start Chipper Moting, something like that, but I don't really see how... I don't really see how Chipper Moting could be as effective as Lewandowski. Definitely, he would be given chances, he would be provided chances by uh, by players. It, I mean, it depends on what Flick wants, really. If he wants to play with the same system, then Chipper Moting has to start, and you have really no choice but to start Chipper Moting up front with Muller, Gnabry, and Sane, or Kuman and Sane. It depends on what you want, but definitely Sane, I think, has to be there because... He's hitting his best form at the moment, and it's the right time, I think, for him to do so. Um, you know, the Lewandowski injury will be slightly off-putting, really, when it comes to the focal point, the way he directs the press, even his physical presence, I would say, and, you know, stamina. I don't think that Triple Moting has the same endurance as Lewandowski, you know, has. he Because Lewandowski knows how to sort of conserve his energy, sort of distribute his energy over the course of the game, and I don't think that Triple Moting has the same ability to do so. Okay, then it it would depend really on Flick and how he chooses the system. If he chooses to play with the same 4-2-3-1, then Chippo Moting starts up front. Then if he wants another system, if he wants another sort of solution to create a solution, he will play someone else. He'll play maybe Muller, but in that case, you're going to be losing two positions, not one, really. You're going to be losing the number nine, and you're going to be losing the, you know, the, the number ten behind him. And you're going to be losing a certain important player in the middle to direct the press, to really make smart movements, to open spaces for the runners in behind. And, you know, for Gnabry, if, again, if we learned anything from the international break, is that Gnabry cannot play centrally. He he just cannot. He just cannot play centrally. And it will be a problem if you put him there. And, you know, out of probably out of every seven to eight chances, he will probably score one. And that is not a good ratio against a side like Leipzig because you want to be deadly and you want to be effective against a side like Leipzig. You want to be, uh, you know, very, very lethal uh, in front of the net against a side like Leipzig because you know that they could hit you also on the counter and you know they're going to be playing with a high line. There's no changing for that. So certainly... Um, you know, it will depend again on all on how Flick would decide to play and, and how how the system is going to be working really against Leipzig and how Leipzig's system in itself is going to be working because um, if Julian Nagelsmann is going to be playing with three in the back to mark ship promoting, I think that is going to be really... I mean, things would be really stupid, quite frankly, because Sean Moting isn't the kind of guy that will move, you know, smartly enough to to disturb a three in the back defence. So, in my opinion, it will depend all on how Flick will set up the team and will set up the side. It will be a hard game. It will be a tough encounter for both sides. And it will be, I think, a fierce battle as well, because, um, you know, Leipzig midfield is a pretty, a pretty aggressive one. And it will be, you know, you know, pretty interesting to watch and see how Julian Nagelsmann is going to pick up this, um, you know, sort of hole left in the team in Bayern Munich as far as Lewandowski is concerned and try to bounce back on it and to direct his play because, you know, without Lewandowski, the press is different, the movement is different, the playing is different, the quality is different and, of course, the finishing and the chance creating is different um, for sure. I mean, definitely the edge goes to Bayern when it comes to these head-to-heads because, realistically speaking, you you know, Bayern Munich, you know, are really, I mean, are really having the advantage in, in this one. I mean, overall, I would say, because between Hansi Flick and, um, and Julian Nagelsmann, the, the last two games ended in a draw between the two sides, and definitely, um, you know, uh, it, it is interesting to see how this game is going to go. In fact, it, this um, sort of a draw stretches go back to, uh, you know, last season as well, um, those who, um, the last season as well, and before that, so it's four games in a row where the game ends in a draw, two nil-nils, one result where it ended 1-1, and of course the 3-3 of the first leg. Then before that, Bayern Munich defeated them 1-0, RB Leipzig defeated them in the League 2-1, 
2 0 for Bayern, then before that, of course, 5 for that famous one for Arjen Robben, and the 3 0 for Bayern Munich. So overall, the edge is for Bayern just because they have won, uh, just because Leipzig have won victory overall against Bayern in, in all, um, in the league. As far as, you know, the whole competition is concerned, you can add to that a, you know, a game, uh, two games in the cup where Bayern, uh, won one and drawn one in 2019. So overall, it's advantage Bayern, but definitely this is going to be different. Again, without Lewandowski, we'll see how Bayern set up. It'll be really interesting to see how they're going to be using their strikers, how they're going to be using their system forward, and, you know, defensively also, how they're going to be dealing with the uh, with the Leipzig team. Bruce Simonchen, Gladbach versus Freiburg as well is following that on Saturday. It'll be really, really interesting to see, um, you know, the, um, you know, to see how going to be uh, the game between RB Leipzig and Bayern Munich affecting the uh, the table of rule and of course the title um, you know the title where is going to be going at the end of the season on Sunday it will be VFB Stuttgart and Werder Bremen and Union Berlin facing Hertha Berlin. Unlike the Bundesliga, the Premier League doesn't have exactly a title decider because the title is already done and dusted and decided and Man City will be winning that trophy by the end of the season. But it also Nonetheless, it's interesting for the top four battles that will ensue over the weekend. Of course, it's going to be Chelsea versus West Brom on Saturday to kick things off. Certainly another game for Thomas Tuchel where they would look to improve their record, improve their clean sheet record, I would say, and try to send messages, I think, ahead of the quarterfinal of the Champions League. Of course, against um, against Porto, it definitely will be an interesting one. Not easy, and definitely Thomas Tuchel needs to be very, very wary leading into that. But certainly Chelsea, I mean, are really in a good lane at the moment, and they probably have a secure place in the top four in the Champions League next season. Leeds United faces Sheffield United uh, on Saturday as well. Then you have, of course, Leicester City versus Manchester City, Arsenal, Liverpool. Uh, Southampton, Burnley on Sunday, Newcastle, United, Tottenham, Aston Villa, Fulham, United facing uh, Brighton and Hove Albion, Everton, Crystal Palace, and uh, that's on Monday, and West Ham face Wolverhampton away on Monday as well. Clearly the focus of the Premier League this weekend is going to focus towards two games, of course, the Leicester City versus Manchester City game, and of course the Arsenal versus Liverpool game as well, and definitely those games I mean, although they have no link to each other, really, because Man City have done and dusted the title, really, and I think the I think the more important game would be by default Arsenal versus Liverpool, and more because of Liverpool's need to win a top four spot or to end in the top four spot this season, because their season has been abysmal, really, in uh, in all standards. Considering it's a title defense, really, if we keep forgetting about this, it's usually it should be a title defense for Liverpool. Um, this this season. Leicester City standing a third with 56 points. They'd be looking to get closer to Man United to overleap them maybe at least momentarily before the game on Sunday. Uh, I mean the international break is going to change a lot of things. We'll see how the Man City players are going to be returning. Is it going to be the same form? Um, the Leicester City as well players I mean have a lot of their names in, in, in the international break, certainly a couple of the Belgians uh, internationals in Castagna and Tiedemans, then have as well Dennis Pratt, um, you know, in Belgium as well. So it will be interesting to see how the international break is going to affect the Premier League in particular, because I think it's the basiest, really, of the leagues in, in Europe, and an international break like that is going to affect the way the games are going to be played. For Man City, you know, it will be returned to form, I would guess. It will be returned to normal for Guardiola. Of course, before a Champions League tie against Borussia Dortmund, he would need to rally his troops and really, you know, focus. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, this is going to be a perfect game for a rotation, I think, from both sides. Definitely for different reasons. Leicester City, because most of their first teamers are, you know, were on the international break and, you know, it, it should be, I think, a rotation for them. For Man City, and for Guardiola, it should be rotation for the sake of rotation, I'd say, before a Champions League game against Borussia Dortmund. That it's not, it's not easy. I mean, um, it, it's not maybe, it's not maybe exactly underdogs going in at Man City, but it is it's going to be a hard one against a side like Borussia Dortmund, who can hurt them and who can annoy them. And of course, this weekend I think is going to determine a lot of stuff when it comes to the Champions League and how the quarterfinal is going to be shaping up to uh, to be. Um, definitely, as far as Arsenal Liverpool is concerned. Liverpool obviously aiming to pick up a top four spot. Definitely, you know, want to improve their season. They want to pick 
sort of a late surge in these last nine to ten games of the season, trying to you know get themselves on the right track. Of course, after a season riddled with injuries, with problems, you know the uh, the amount of you know criticism they would have, the problems they would have as well. Aside from injuries, there's players who dropped significantly in their level. You talk about the fullbacks. You talk about Roberto Firmino. You talk about Thiago coming to the team and not proving himself really well. So you expect you know Liverpool to sort of try and make a comeback of sorts in these last 10 games of course i think the i think the fact that you know also they have a lot of players returning from international break maybe affect them as well uh, because they don't have the same amount of internationals as as well as arsenal do brent Lehner wasn't exactly called up in the uh, in the german squad you always don't have exactly you know the, you don't have a lot of players called up in the german squad i mean for, for arsenal they have pretty much a rested i think squad a couple of players here and there surely i mean saka is injured so it wasn't called up so they have i think a the physical advantage i would say or the lack of injuries advantage and the lack of internationals advantage over Liverpool international players that is so it might just give them a slight hope in in winning this game um you know of course the first one was completely outdone by Liverpool 3-1 at the uh, at the Anfield and as far you know as Liverpool are concerned it will definitely be a defining moment a turning moment I would say in the uh, in the season for them in this last hurdles of the season where they need to pick up as much points as possible to try and finish in the top four spots i mean they're in the eighth position at the moment 46 points only three points far from west ham at fifth and five far from chelsea certainly they'll have some deciding fixtures to play over the next couple of weeks obviously Leicester city versus manchester city is a big game as well in in that regard chelsea i mean would be hoping that leicester lose because chelsea would want to improve their position from fourth to fourth to third it'd definitely be interesting to see um again this is going to be a weekend where the international breaks are going to have their effect we'll see how it's going to be affecting the teams and how the uh, the players are going to be you know conserving their energy or going to be spending their energy on uh, the pitch for sure to round 29 of la liga we go now into spain although that is not exactly the biggest of head-to-heads uh, this week but certainly every match for the Top three, at least, who are considered with a title, of course, matters. Um, it kicks off on Friday with Levante facing Huesca. On Saturday, it will be Granada via Real. Real Madrid hosting Eibar. Uh, Osuna hosting Hetafe. Deportivo Aves hosting Celta Vigo on Sunday. Elche hosting Real Betis. Cadiz versus Valencia on Sunday as well. Sevilla versus Atletico Madrid. And Barcelona versus Real Valladolid on Monday. On uh, Wednesday, it will be Real Sociedad versus Athletic Bilbao. Because both of them are involved in in a cup final um in the on saturday of course the cup final of last year which is not played yet so it will be definitely a, an interesting uh, one to see of course i think we're now going to be having two finals in the space of 10 days i would say because on the 13th of april i think it will be uh boston versus atletico bilbao in the cup final for this uh year so the big axis i think for this week is going to be obviously the title race continuous as usual the interest in it um i don't think i mean although i still believe atletico madrid are going to be winning the title eventually i i have those doubts i mean rightfully so i mean boston 62 points behind Atletico Madrid, four points behind. I mean, the game against Sevilla is not going to be easy for Atletico Madrid, and you have Barcelona playing Real Valladolid, so this should be three points for Barcelona. As far as Atletico Madrid are concerned, they need to win their game against Sevilla. It has to be. They don't have no European football to be concerned about. They don't have Champions League to focus on. Real Madrid have that problem on the on the other hand. And of course, the latest news that Sergio Ramos is going to be missing a month of action. That is surely going to be somewhat of a effective, you know, effectively very, very sort of important factor when you talk about this game uh, for um, for Eibar and also of course the bigger picture looking ahead to the Champions League tie with, against Liverpool for Real Madrid and we're certainly going to be previewing that in, in deep in deep analysis but Barcelona I think are the closest to win the title like if if one of those teams if I have my money on one of those teams obviously I would have my money on Barcelona at the moment I really don't see Real Madrid consistent enough to catch up to Atletico Madrid and to win the title. I think Barcelona can have the closest, maybe they have the biggest chance out of the two to really do it. Four points behind, 
and you know on a consistent performance really on consistent form as of late and you know really playing some good football I mean on a season where everybody expected them to drop below top four and not have the best of seasons they're really the strongest attack one of the strongest defenses um, you know surprisingly enough and you know playing some of the best football really they played over the last you know three or four seasons really like it's I mean it's almost like Barcelona of the old days I mean bar the differences and really uh, all respect to the you know the the players that they had back then absolutely legends in their own right but Boston are playing you know really uplifting football I would say considering everybody's expectation for them in the season I mean obviously they crashed out of the Champions League so there's no surprise about that really considering the quality gap between them and PSG overall as a as a team but definitely if they work some kinks here and there improve some positions try to get rid of the financial problems maybe Boston would have a chance next season of returning to the right form they need to be returning into. I mean, obviously, they will be in the Champions League next season. Some people were even afraid they won't make it to that competition next season. But, you know, um, Boston, I think, proved everybody wrong. Like, if there's any team that proved everybody wrong in their expectation this season, it should probably be Barcelona and maybe Liverpool in the Premier League just because of their, um, you know, uh, inverted luck this season in terms of the title defence. But as far as Barcelona are concerned, I think they're playing some of the best football there is to play in Spain. And, you know, some interesting situations are brewing here with, with them and Atletico Madrid. Of course, they still didn't face, um, you know, each other head-to-head -head at the camp now. I think that is going to be the defining game, aside from El Clasico. Again, like, this week is going to, I mean, this week is going to define how important El Clasico will be. Say that those three teams win, then El Clasico, I think, will have a big importance, I think, for Barcelona than Atletico Madrid because they will stay four points behind and they will stay closer. Then if Barcelona win El Clasico, they evade, I think, and they take out Real Madrid practically out of the title race. And then you can have a sort of a one-on-one -on -one situation with Atletico Madrid in the rest of the seasons. Say one of them drop points and depending who's that going to be, the one will drop in points. If Atletico is going to be the team that dropping points out of the three, then it's going to give chance to both Boston and, and Real Madrid to catch up to them and say they win their matches. I think it will be a fierce Clasico next Sunday. And obviously with Real Madrid being torn apart between the Champions League games in between them, uh, the Clasico would be... Definitely, it would be an interesting end to the season before 10 fixtures of the end uh, of, of La Liga. Definitely. I mean, I mean, from out of nowhere, we'd have an, a, we're talking about a title race. I mean, for a while, it looked like Atletico Madrid are going to be escaping. Real Madrid have been inconsistent enough to blow it up for themselves, and it definitely wasn't exactly, it wasn't the most satisfying, really, of title races in, this, uh, in La Liga. But Atletico Madrid... As usual, I would say, managed to shoot themselves in the foot and give themselves a headache in the uh, in the later stages of the season, bowing out of the Champions League in two horrific performances against Chelsea, both home and away, and also dropping a lot of points in the in La Liga as of late against unnecessary opponents. I would say, when you drop points against Levante, um, you know, in in the space of three days twice, and you drop four points against, um, drop five points against Levante in the space of a week. You really cannot be considered as a runaway league leaders. I mean, they're leading the league. They're still leading the league, but it's a fragile lead, I would say. The four points gap is a you know is a very very um, you know overturned overturnable if that's a word. I mean, it's very um, you know it's very risky as far as you know any slip up is concerned. Boston is going to catch up. He's going to close down the gap, and obviously the head to head games between them is still to be played as well as a classico is going to be deciding. Of things, so it will it will be really interesting to see how the title race is going to be shaping up after this week, and also El Clasico, of course, looking ahead to that. And between that, for Real Madrid, is the Champions League tie against Liverpool. So obviously, always intrigued by the by the Liga title race, and we will see how things are going to be panned out one week removed from El Clasico. Rounding off with the Serie A, uh, and of course, it's, you know, it's weirdly enough, it's a backed house. It's a sort of a Boxing Day feeling in Serie A on Saturday. All the games are going to be taking place on the Saturday and will be pretty, pretty heavy sort of schedule to follow for the Serie A. It starts with Milan versus Sampdoria um, in 11.30 a.m. Napoli, Crotone, Solo, Roma, Atalanta, Udinese, Lazio, Spezia, Genoa, Fiorentina, 
Bomb, uh, Benevento hosting Bomb, Gallery hosting Hellas Verona, Torino, Juventus and Bologna enter. There's a couple of games that might be postponed or called off due to, uh, to COVID-19 situations. We don't know about that really, but we're going to take it as it is. And, you know, with almost uh, season over as well, with nine uh, games left in the uh, in the Serie A to play, it's definitely interesting to see how, you know, these results are going to be panning out. I mean, obviously at the moment, Enter are leading six points ahead, uh, you know, of the uh, of the game of the game they're going to be playing against um, against Bologna. Obviously, Milan are behind them, looking for any other slip. Really, of course, the last time they didn't play uh, the game of round 28 against um, against Sassuolo because of the COVID situation for both clubs um, as well. Um, you know, definitely, it will be very very interesting to see how they're going to be, you know, really taking care of that pretty much. Uh, as far as um, as Inter are concerned, returning to the game, um, you know, missing I think more game time than others. Also, they have a couple of internationals returning. Uh, definitely, you know, it'll be interesting to see how the other teams are going to be trying to exploit Inter's you know absence. Mainly, I'm talking about Milan and Juventus here. If anything, try to just close down the gap a little bit. Although. I mean, little hope is left, really, when it comes to talking about the title race in Serie A. Little hope is left talking about the uh, chase in Inter, because at the moment, and with this form that Inter are in, even before the even before the break, it doesn't look like anyone is catching up to Inter. Certainly, I, I doubt it will be Juventus, because with 10 points behind uh, Inter Milan, with a game in hand against the Napoli side that is, you know, having some of his best football played this season at the very moment... It doesn't look like the Juventus are going to be catching up to Inter Milan. Certainly, I don't fancy Milan catching up to them unless, you know, Inter slip up a lot during the course of the season. And, of course, because of that, it will be really, again, it will be always interesting to see how the Serie A pans out. I mean, surprisingly enough, in the season where Juventus has, you know, sort of um, chokehold on the Serie A title is going to be ending imminently really um there's no real intrigue about it like there's no real mystery there's no real four horse of three horse five horse out of race to determine who's going to be winning the Serie A like I, like back in the day of course that used to happen back in the day there would be Inter, AC Milan, Juventus both Roma sides they would be fighting for the title and it would be a five horse race and every game in the Serie A literally every game would have mattered really because that would have been um, you know, you know, a great title race. The, 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 the back of the day where Roma were winning titles and Lazio were winning titles, there was a title race for days. And yes, of course, I mean, the culture poorly in the end, I think, really put a sort of a damper or any intrigue in the Serie A because people's minds are going to be cast back to that time if there is an intrigue in another race, if there is some sort of weird results happening, but definitely not now. The Serie A is cleansing uh, their reputation uh, at the moment, and certainly this season when it looks like another team might be winning it and, you know, taking it from the grip of Ventus, unfortunately there's not enough intrigue about it. There was to a certain point, but as it stands... Eventually, it will look like Inter, I mean, will probably, you know, walk their way through a Serie A title. And that is by no means bad, because it's better for them to do so. And they needed to sacrifice, I think, their Champions League spots. They need to sacrifice their cop spot. They need to sacrifice, you know, the European sort of glory kind of thing, running or chasing the European glory in order to win the title. The short-term thinking from Antonio Conte is working wonders. And, you know, it's really doing fine at the moment. Definitely a week where Inter Milan should be, you know, you know, defining themselves as the champions. Obviously, a game in hand still to be played against Sassuolo in the midweek. Um, you know, it will be really interesting to see how the Antonio Conte side is going to be dealing with the situation. As far as AC Milan are concerned, I don't really think they're going to be catch up to them. Uh, also, a Juventus. Probably Juventus should be focused about the top four positioning because there is Romo 50 points. 53 for Napoli, of course, with the game in hand against Juventus, they're going to be played on Wednesday, and they're going to be Atalanta joint on points, and their game is, and, and the game looks, you know, and the game looks pretty easy, really, Atalanta against Udinese, I mean, it's a game that Atalanta should be picking up three points in it, really, and, you know, um, if they pick three points, and Juventus drop points against Torino in the derby, as well as you have, uh, you know, Napoli, 
playing Crotone, that should be three points for them as well, so it'll be interesting uh, to see how the top four is going to be shaping. Roma is going to be uh, playing Sassola away from home, that's going to be a tricky one for the Wolves of the Capital. Lazio are going to be facing Spezia, I mean, it's really some uh, unbalanced time, more or less, in the Serie A, but overall, um, you know, all affecting, I think, the uh, the top four positioning as far as the teams that I mentioned are concerned, and the top six of the Serie A table at the moment, they're going to be playing some musical chairs, really as far as the top four is concerned but you know as far as the title i think inter milan are going to be winning it um it depends by how many points they would do and in how in in what is the fashion they're going to be doing it is it going to be you know running through the teams as of late or just you know strolling here and there giving false hope to the others and then taking it away that's it for me for this weekend preview episode i was able with hd of the psp like share comment on the youtube version of this episode uh on the youtube and the podcast subscribe to the youtube channel and neighbor notifications to receive all the updates from these episodes of the podcast which you can which you can listen to on spotify google podcast or any other platform of course follow us on social media site psp under the pitch setboard on instagram and definitely share help it spread the word to help us reach 1k. I was a boy with the HID of the PSP, and until next time, I'll be seeing you soon. Goodbye.